the end of the world predictions that weren't. The many times the world was supposed to end, but didn't. Hello, doomsday enthusiasts and fellow skeptics. Today, we're diving into a topic that has fascinated and terrified humanity for centuries, the end of the world. For as long as people have been staring up at the stars, we've been predicting our own demise. And let's just say, we're not very good at it. What makes this topic so interesting is how often these predictions fail, and yet, they keep coming back. So, let's take a look at some of the most infamous end-of-the-world predictions that didn't quite pan out. The Great Disappointment of 1844 Let's start in the 19th century with a man named William Miller. Miller was a farmer-turned-preacher who believed he had cracked the code of biblical prophecy. After years of study, he announced that Jesus would return and the world would end sometime between March 1843 and March 1844. When nothing happened in 1843, Miller went back to his calculations and revised the date to October 22, 1844. This time, he was absolutely certain. His followers, known as Millwrights, sold their belongings, donned white robes, and climbed up hills to await the apocalypse. And then nothing. The sun set, the stars came out, and the world kept spinning. The event became known as the Great Disappointment, which, let's be honest, is an excellent name for a failed doomsday prediction. To their credit, many millwrights didn't abandon their faith. They regrouped and eventually formed the Seventh-day Adventist Church. As for Miller, he quietly retired from the doomsday prediction business. The Halley's Comet Panic of 1910 Fast forward to 1910, when Halley's Comet made its regular 76-year appearance. People were excited, until someone pointed out that the comet's tail contained cyanogen gas, a compound similar to cyanide. A French astronomer declared that when Earth passed through the comet's tail, the gas could seep into the atmosphere and poison us all. Newspapers ran with the story, and mass hysteria ensued. Entrepreneurs started selling anti-comet pills, gas masks, and even umbrellas designed to protect against falling gas. Some people barricaded themselves indoors, while others threw elaborate end-of-the-world parties. Of course, the comet came and went without incident. No poison gas, no apocalypse, just a really cool light show. But it's a perfect example of how fear can spread faster than any comet ever could. Y2K, the millennium bug that didn't bite. Ah, uh, the year 2000. Remember that one? As the clock ticked closer to midnight on December 31st, 1999, people weren't just worried about champagne and party hats. They were convinced that computers would lose their minds when the date rolled over to zero zero, causing global chaos. Planes were predicted to fall from the sky, power grids were expected to fail, and the financial system was supposed to collapse. Governments and businesses spent billions of dollars preparing for the so-called Y2K bug. And what happened when the clock struck midnight? Nothing. Computers kept working, planes stayed in the air, and the financial system chugged along just fine. Some argue that all the preparation paid off, while others say the panic was overblown from the start. Either way, it was one of the most expensive what-if scenarios in history. The Mayan calendar and 2012. Now, let's talk about one of the most hyped doomsday predictions of recent memory, December 21st, 2012. According to some interpretations of the ancient Mayan calendar, this date marked the end of a cycle called the Long Count, leading many to believe it was also the end of the world. Books were written, movies were made, and survivalists stocked up on canned goods. Some people thought a rogue planet called Nibiru would collide with Earth. Others feared massive solar flares or a black hole swallowing us whole. When the big day arrived, guess what happened? Nothing. Scientists had been saying all along that the Mayan calendar didn't predict the apocalypse. It just rolled over to a new cycle, like flipping a page on a calendar. But that didn't stop 2012 from becoming a cultural phenomenon and a fantastic marketing opportunity for doomsday merch. Why do we keep falling for these predictions? So, why do end-of-the-world predictions keep popping up, even though they're always wrong? Well, part of it is human nature. We're storytellers at heart, and what's a bigger story than the end of everything? There's also a psychological component. 
Apocalyptic predictions often gain traction during times of uncertainty or upheaval. The Great Disappointment happened during a period of rapid social change in the U.S. The Halley's Comet Panic came at the dawn of modern science. Y2K coincided with our growing dependence on technology, and 2012 fed into fears about climate change and global instability. Finally, there's the appeal of feeling like you're in the know. Believing you've cracked the code or uncovered a hidden truth gives people a sense of control in an unpredictable world, even if that truth turns out to be, well, not so true. Lessons for the next apocalypse. The next time someone predicts the end of the world, here's my advice. Take a deep breath, check the facts, and remember that we've been here before. The Earth has survived comets, calendars, and coding errors, and chances are, it'll survive the next doomsday prediction too. In the meantime, why not enjoy the humor of it all? After all, if humanity is good at anything, it's turning even the end of the world into a chance for a good story and maybe a little profit on the side.